So to live a life that is obsessed with words and concepts is to live a life that is obsessed with that which points, but to never truly understand that which we are pointing at when we use these words. And we are back, baby, with another reflection on the daily badonka donk. And today's reflection may be more colloquial, modern articulation than the timeless articulation. But nonetheless, the concept and principle is as timeless as any other that we've discussed on this podcast. And that is the value of scholarship. Not too long ago, a very academic, articulate take on bullshit blew my mind. That lying is saying an untruth, but bullshit is trying to dissuade anyone from caring about the truth. Lying would be to deceive, but to bullshit someone, that's trying to just, it's even more nefarious. And that it is trying to just scrub the whole situation of even caring about the truth. It's kind of like just uh, fake news, actual fake news that introduces bullshit into our cultural psyche. And then even the term fake news to try to discredit something that might be factual by calling it fake news. It's just a fishbowl of bullshit all the way around in so many ways. Similarly, in philosophy, it's not so much bullshit that you have to be weary of and people that bullshit. It's more dangerous for the people that are scholars that can impress by reciting the entire, maybe the entire Bhagavad Gita from memory. There are people out there that can recite it from memory. My teacher, Joseph, one of my teachers, Joseph, is a brilliant uh, Vedantic student, but also understands that being a brilliant student versus really understanding it, living it. They might be super far apart. He mentions the example of someone that could recite the, the Bhagavad Gita backwards and forwards, literally recite it word for word in Sanskrit, backwards. That is quite the skill. It's quite the talent. But to memorize something is very different than to live it. Our six-year-old Elle, she loves, she loves to recite the rules to her little sisters here in our household. And then 30 seconds later, break them herself. There is value in knowing the rules, knowing the principles in a, in a way that where you could articulate it, recite it to another, more importantly, to yourself. But that is so different than living it. The guru, the sage, the saint, the prophet is seen as someone that is walking wisdom, meaning they are living the wisdom. Not only is it so cool because you could almost watch the principle in action to give you such a great exemplary visual that goes alongside maybe something you've been moved by when you're reading it or studying it, reflecting on the language. To see it visually is profound. It's a profound compliment to studying it scholastically. But philosophy, religion, it has, we have so many examples in these realms where someone knew it conceptually, but didn't live it. That were walking hypocrites instead of walking wisdom that actively destroyed 
faith destroyed the influence that a philosophy could have because they didn't live it. And this disconnection from knowing a tradition conceptually and living it, that disconnection, the delta between the two of those, that is a tale as old as time, as, as old as the timeless philosophy itself. Shankaracharya, the great sage from 1300 years ago, famously critiqued the grammarian, studying all of the proper grammar of the Sanskrit scriptures. And Shankara told him, your grammar will not save you. On this podcast, we've touched on the fact that even this philosophy, it is not the truth. That the limitations of language are so significant that even saying a concept is, is the, according to this philosophy, reciting it perfectly, maybe knowing all of them. The philosophy itself is not the truth. It's just the pointer. It's just the finger pointing at the truth. That's the best we will all, that is the best any of us will ever get with words, with concepts. So to live a life that is obsessed with words and concepts is to live a life that is obsessed with that which points, but to never truly understand that which we are pointing at when we use these words. The scholar has very little value in the philosophical realm. Because even what they say with words, if they are undoing with their actions and unwise actions destroy worlds, then what is, what was the point of their words? And the situation is made even worse when they make people twice shy to look in the direction of a philosophy of a religious tradition. And they put people off because their behavior does not match. Their living example does not match with the words they so eloquently use. There are people that swear off entire traditions or maybe God itself for decades or lifetimes because of an experience with one of these scholars, one of these hypocrites. So it's not just that it is an obsession with the pointer instead of what is being pointed at, but it's also dangerous because the chance of it destroying the worlds around that person with their hypocrisy or with the significant contrast between what they're saying and what they're doing. That is worse than bullshit because it's not relegated to the realm of maybe business or marketing bullshit. This is dealing with people's souls, with people's inner peace, the direction of a community, significantly more severe and deserving of its own name, scholarship. And that is today's reflection on the Daily Vedantic. We'll see you next time.